बांग्लादेश नेपाल पाकिस्तान म्यांमार मालदीव्स श्रीलंका ऑल दीज कंट्रीज हैव वेरी रिसेंटली हैड टू पे देयर प्राइस फॉर बीइंग एक्सट्रीमली क्लोज टू चाइना रिसेंटली चाइनीज एंड द रशियन चैनल्स हैव स्टार्टेड टू मेंशन द ईयर 2027 एज द ईयर ऑफ टर्मोइल सो आर दीज फियर्स रियल और जस्ट पार्ट ऑफ अ नैरेटिव एंड व्हाई शुड वी एज इंडियंस बी बॉदर्ड अबाउट इट This video is going to be from India's perspective and we've tried to keep it as neutral as possible but let me tell you this is going to be an unpopular narrative so at this point you have the liberty to skip the video Our objective is not to discredit anyone we just want to cover the blind spots for the media and the popular narrative This video will be covered in different portions one will be china's dilemma another will be america's game plan and finally india's dilemma now you must have seen what happened in bangladesh those heart wrenching scenes from bangladesh must have shook many of us to the core but was it unexpected let me take you through the sequence of events earlier in march we had posted about how pm sheikh hasina had been claiming that us wants to carve out a new country between bangladesh and myanmar something like east timor we had posted this in a video you can check it on our channel then in april 2024 we had posted about mohammad yunus who is right now running the interim government in bangladesh we had covered his relationship with the clinton foundation and how clinton foundation had gone on to twist arm twist Sheikh Hasina June 2024 we had posted about how Al Qaeda has increased its recruitment from Bangladesh then on July 5th we had warned about the students protest we had warned that this will escalate and at that point nobody was really listening to us anyway the point is not us as a channel warning about it but the point is that Bangladesh was steadily headed towards chaos and this was not unexpected at all Sheikh Hasina had gone to China in the month of July and she had asked for a loan of 2 billion dollars from China. Sheikh Sheikh Hasina was always a good friend of India but she was also an ally of China. By the way, do you know where is the biggest submarine base in South Asia or or the Indian subcontinent? It is in Bangladesh and it's called the BNS Sheikh Hasina submarine base. So uh Bangladesh itself has, has just two submarines but this submarine base in BNS Sheikh Hasina can dock at least six submarines this was constructed with the help of chinese and the two submarines by the way which uh, Bangladesh owns are actually china's gift to Bangladesh so who do you think will come and dock in the submarine base called BNS Sheikh Hasina it's of course going to be the chinese So why do Chinese want to dock their submarines here? China has a problem and it's called the Strait of Malacca. Strait of Malacca is just 65 kilometers wide and every day about 200 ships cross that area. And for China, Strait of Malacca plays a very important role in its trade. Unfortunately for China, right at the mouth of Strait of Malacca, the Indian and American agencies are sitting and keeping a tab of the Chinese ships and submarines coming out of Strait of Malacca. This was quite a pain in China's neck. This is why China came up with the idea of BRI or the Belt and Road Initiative. Of course, trade was one of the reasons, but it was also wanting to circumvent Strait of Malacca. How? Well, uh, China understood that through CPEC via Pakistan, it can access the Arabian Ocean, and via Bangladesh and Myanmar, it can access the Bay of Bengal. This is how the Bangladesh submarine base comes into the picture. Can you imagine Chinese docking their submarines right next to India in Bay of Bengal, in Bangladesh? Well, it is not about imagining; it was actually happening. BNS Sheikh Hasina submarine base is a reality today. China was going about executing the same strategy across India's neighborhood and China was also running a propaganda to discredit India's existence for example it wanted everyone to start using the words like asia pacific instead of indo pacific and then of course pakistan and china had been pushing for words like south asia 
South Asia is actually um, a synonym for Indian subcontinent. This is why it's a request that please do not use words like Asia Pacific and South Asia. The actual words are Indo Pacific and Indian subcontinent. String of pearls is also a reality that we are facing today. We are countering it, but India doesn't have deep pockets like China. Anyways, China had all the liberty in the world till it began to hurt America and its allies, which are called the Five Eyes, which includes UK, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and America itself, and hence the word Five Eyes. Since multiple powerful countries and multiple events are involved, we have to go back in time to 2021. In fact, uh, I would ideally like to start in 2014 when Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine. Everything started at that point, but to help people understand things better, uh, we'll go back to comprehend things better, we'll go back to 2021. So what happened in 2021? In April 2021, if you go back, we had reported that Russia plans to attack Ukraine. And we had also said that Russia plans to uh, take land up to the Dnieper River. You can go back and check our tweets and, uh, and our posts on, on so Resonant News' social media. So the point here being, uh, at that point, media mildly uh, posted about it. There were headlines made out of it. And then everything went silent. Soon we realized there was a perception being created that China will attack Taiwan soon. And our attention was diverted to China and Taiwan. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you will remember that in December 2021, there was news of China storing frozen food, buying pork and so many other kind of uh, headlines, basically uh, trying to create a perception that China plans to attack Taiwan and this is why it is storing food. But the actual action was happening at the Russia-Ukraine border where Russia was pushing its troops toward the border. Then in Afghan, uh, then August 2021, Taliban took over Afghanistan. And American forces left in a jiffy. If, if you uh, know, if you know, most of you who must be listening are either defense enthusiasts or, or take interest in strategic affairs, they'll understand that an idle soldier is like a rusting iron. It not just applies to soldier but also to the weapon systems. So why would any powerful country uh, of, of US's stature would pull back so many soldiers, mercenaries and um, weapon systems from not just Afghanistan, but also Iraq. In fact, if you remember, Russia, um, America was also pulling back its weapon systems from Middle East. If you go back in time and if you check the headlines, in 2021, America was pulling back its weapon systems from Middle East. Where was uh, America planning to redeploy these weapon systems, mercenary groups? Of course, in Ukraine. The plan was to corner Russia. Since 2014, multiple Democratic and Republican governments came in power in America, but they all stuck to the same strategy of isolating Russia. Trump at the max could have delayed the Russia-Ukraine war, but he could not have prevented it. Because if you see, if you, if you look back, Trump was the person who signed the 2018 agreement with Taliban in Doha that America will pull back its soldiers from Afghanistan and Taliban can take over Afghanistan. Anyways, in 2021, Russia was steadily accumulating its forces around Ukraine and the final pounding began in 2022. Back then, we had posted two uh, videos on how this is going to be the war of mercenaries and that it will last longer than a month and two as Russia is well prepared. This is again the popular American narrative back then. The country which went for a toss when Biden took over was Myanmar. Myanmar coup took place in... Um, February 2021 and it was it came as a surprise to man, many. China back then had sent its soldiers to assist the Myanmar army during the military coup. Myanmar democratically elected government has suddenly ceased to exist. But since last five years, if you look at it, America has been steadily trying to isolate China. Where in um, 2019, we had posted an article about how under Manohar Parikar sir, we had joined the fishhook network. Fishhook is actually a sound surveillance system used to detect submarines. We had joined that network system with uh, America and Japan. America and Japan were originally using this uh, surveillance system for the Soviet submarines. 
later they began using it uh, for the chinese submarines which are passing through the south china sea so when india joined the fish hook network we also get, uh, started getting the data about the chinese submarines which were crossing that area and this is why you you will see that in last few years a lot of infrastructure development has taken place around the andaman and nicobar islands but then america was not just taking india into its confidence it was also taking other countries under its wing like indonesia philippines korea japan thailand which is considered a pro china um, china country underwent a change in government very recently just just two weeks ago meanwhile um, uk france australia and other allies of us increased their presence in south china sea and the indian ocean region on the other side european union uh, approached iran it is right now talking to iran about a peace agreement and is working on a nuclear deal there's also a uh, talks of peace deal between russia and ukraine in case russia ukraine peace deal happens then ukraine will lose eastern part of ukraine to russia what us and allies are trying to achieve here is to pull out their resources involved in israel and ukraine and concentrate it towards china did i say israel yes i did what do you think is happening in israel israel war is basically a by product of russia ukraine war let me explain how why do you think hamas riled up israeli forces knowing that a provocative attack on israel would mean an all out war on gaza so why did hamas attack israel at all it was basically to spread israel and america's resources thin as expected america had to pull out some of its resources from ukraine and then de- uh, redeploy them to israel also ukraine was informed that from now on israel will be a priority so america and russia are not just doing this to each other uh, in the middle east and russia ukraine they are also doing this to, to each other in africa china is executing the same strategy of r- spreading american resources thin in south china sea this is why america is ensuring that the investment china has made along bri goes down the drain and this is being achieved through regime change this is why you'll see that a lot of regime change has happened along the bri yet on the surface us and china have thawed the relationship one of the biggest signs of panic among ccp is a crackdown being carried out uh, within ccp in the name of corruption everyone from china's foreign minister to defense minister have been shunted out and not even the nuclear force nuclear rocket force as china handled over 36000 cases of corruption in just 2023 this includes 45 high ranking officials one of the countries which is neutral towards both us and china is pakistan in fact it is an ally of both us and china china uses a uh, us uh, pakistan against india pakistan is basically known for its mercenary business that is it provides mercenaries to other uh, countries and china utilizes the same mercenaries against india us probably uses it against russia anyways pakistan army this is why pakistan army despite poorly performing pakistani economy and incessant attacks by bla and ttp remains to stay afloat it basically uses its mercenary business to earn money one good example is isi executing the bangladesh student movement for america and using it against india what is india dilemma here no other country faces the same problem as india we have two belligerent nations as our immediate neighbors and they are both having nuclear weapons this is why india has to tread very carefully uh, it is said that during indira gandhi's uh, government in 1970s and 1980s there were a lot of uh, the kgb moles and uh, cia moles in indira gandhi's government because america chose pakistan over india India had to side with Russia. Russia used to provide us weapon and equipments and also used to charge us very heavily for maintaining it. Well, it's a business, you see, there are no free lunches, so it's understandable. Everything was very hunky-dory till China began to drop its route around India's neighborhood. Now, China uh, has deep pockets and this is why Russia remains silent. Russia is neutral when it comes to China and India. 
russia knows that it needs china's support to stand against america this is why even during galwan russia was very uh, neutral and without an iota of doubt russia will remain neutral uh, in future also it will not go against china uh, and and probably not go against india too but it will not speak up against uh, china china has always been our immediate threat and how china has been eyeing ladakh and arunachal pradesh it has also been funding pakistan to run sleeper cells inside india so that it can be internally destabilized so a uh, lot of narrative is there about cia cia kgb they've all been funding a lot of groups inside india but so does china and that too through pakistan so that its name doesn't come out openly we have often heard about cia Uh, causing regime change in a lot of countries and we witnessed it also but very less is spoken about how china and russia go about doing the same thing in africa and uh, in in american continent itself in fact black lives is a good, black lives matter is a very good example where china was funding and um, china was supplying weapons to antifa antifa was banned during trump and he called it a terrorist organization anyway point is China and Russia also are involved in regime changes. This is why we witnessed multiple coup in Africa in recent times. Anyways, India dilemma is we don't have deep pockets, and India has been ruled by Congress for a very long time, which has been pro-China, which is uh, seen as pro-China. So since last seven decades, our approach mostly has been pro-China. This despite our war against China in nineteen sixty two. if you remember upa government he, it kept delaying action inside quad which includes america japan australia and india it kept delaying action in in that group because it was scared of offending china imagine so india went and joined brics and uh, shanghai cooperation organization sco instead which both have Russia and China as its main members. Apparently, under uh, UPA government, they also plan to give away Siachen to Pakistan. Imagine that happening. So the present government will be seen as a very pro-US government because it is under this government that for the first time Indian go- uh, Indian Army is using Sig Sauer seven one six, which is an American assault rifle, along with the Russian Kalashnikov AK forty seven AK two zero three assault rifle that we've been using since ages now. so point is that uh, india is trying to balance it out between russia and america by buying defense equipment from both the sides we've also bought uh, drones helicopters and a um, lot of other equipment from both the sides both russia and and america india's game though for china is completely different india has realized that we do not have deep pockets like china and we have to rely on a more powerful ally to counter china and that happens to be america currently china if you look at it it is one of the biggest supporters of maoist attacks against indian forces uh, right now even pakistan spy agency isi is supporting maoist movement within india to destabilize india internally so if anyone says that china is not an immediate threat i'll say they are ignorant China's increasing influence in India's neighborhood was a cause of concern, and hence India relied on U.S. to accelerate its defense capa- uh, capabilities against China. If you look at it, um, Congress Party, which is seen as pro-China, has always been against India buying Rafale from France. Why? Because Rafale will hurt China. Now coming back to what we were discussing in the very beginning of this video, which is China twenty twenty seven, China has been claiming that U.S. is planning to cause a turmoil inside China by twenty twenty seven by uh, forcing China to attack Taiwan. In this case, we can completely trust China because it works in China's favor to maintain status quo in uh, in in South China Sea. under no circumstance would it like to change or cause any turbulence in south china sea because its trade is going uh, on without any hurdle so unless america wants to change the circumstances in ses which is south china sea nothing will change there and india alone cannot change uh, or the situation in south china sea and india alone cannot cause any any uh, harm to china alone 
this is why it needs an ally like america so in this case we can completely trust china's claim and china has exactly an year from now by 2026 it will become very evident where china is headed when it comes to uh, india and when it comes to america and as you see india meanwhile has to choose from uh, deep sea and the devil which is china and america i leave it up to you to decide which side uh, ideally india should be choosing under such circumstances anyways that's it for now uh, there are lot of other topics that i wanted to touch for example de-dollarization but it's a hyped topic that's it it's hyped and there's no use discussing it so uh, i have not touched many topics but uh, for now i i hope i have covered china 2027 and that china's fall is imminent in the near future actually when i say china it is not china i'm actually talking about the communist party of china so till we meet again stay informed and hope you found this video very informative and if you did do give us feedback and do tell us what kind of videos do you like to watch on our channel thank you so much good day